Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Last time round, we did Lena's bad ending because we missed out a step. We bet with Alyssa where we shouldn't have bet with Alyssa. So this time, we are going for Lena's good ending. Hmm. Okay, as as is usual, we've done a complete playthrough of this game now, and we've done uh, a complete playthrough that's given us Layla's bad ending. So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to do the things that are different and the decisions. So I'm going to play through this game very, very quickly, and I'll cut this through this, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring you back in at the, the first decision, which is praise the book, and then I will do each... Um, step in turn and uh, we'll, we'll show that off. We won't go through all the dialogue in between and anything that's new I will read as normal so I shall see you guys in just a second. Let's start a new game. I don't know why but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that had happened today. That was all my constructive mood would offer. Here it was much brighter than near the canteen, and tidy pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. Bus, summer camp, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl, reading a book. Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only new person I'd met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, what are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think such literature suits her very well. Slava and Olga went inside. I was going to follow, but someone grabbed my hand. Elisa. Her gaze severed a shiver down my spine. Not a nice one. You want something? I asked carefully. You gonna play this stupid game? Um, yes. Something wrong with that? No, nothing. She was turning to leave, but then slowly looked back and smiled. So you play cards? A little. I couldn't figure out what she wanted. So, only Durek and that's it. As if you're a pop poker star. Well, yes, technically. Then you don't have a chance. Why? Because. So you know the rules? Of course. Well then, you'll have the upper hand. I couldn't see why we would go on talking and motion towards the door. Why do you keep trying to leave? Is there something else you'd like to talk about? Let's make a bet. What do you mean? You're such a slowpoke. The cards. What else? And what do you want to bet on? That I'll win. That's quite a possible outcome. I agreed calmly. So, are you afraid? No, I'm not. I'm just not big on bets when I don't like my chances. And not big on taking risks, too. Such an astute observation. I'm impressed. Right then, I... No, you're not. Now what? I sighed in exhaustion. She was starting to annoy me with her rubbish talk about some pointless bet. If you would bet with me, I'll tell everyone that you tried to seduce me. What? You heard me. I could imagine her doing this. Don't be stupid. Who's going to believe you? I've been here less than two days. Besides... Want to try your luck? Right. And what will happen if I win? I won't tell anyone anything. And if I lose? 
Slowpoke mode again? I'll tell everyone you tried to seduce me. I told you already. So you're telling me now that I have to work to prove that I didn't do something when I didn't actually do it? If that's how you want to look at it. Not a simple decision. On the one hand, it was stupid to agree. I didn't know the rules and gambling wasn't my thing. On the other hand, she could really make my life hell. Then again, could I even trust her? She can do it even if I win. So, have you made a decision? I was going to answer, but suddenly Lena came around me from behind. Where? Hey. What? Nothing. Lena hurried inside. So? Right, we will not bet with Elisa. No, I'm not going to participate. No, I'm not going to participate in your shady business. Sorry about that. You was. She shrugged and went up the stairs. Before she went inside, she flung at me. Prepare to face the consequences. Consequences? What if I made the wrong decision? After all, she could really complicate things for me here. On the other hand, I just couldn't allow myself to be pulled into something so reckless. I let out a heavy sigh and followed her through the door. I approached the table that Lena sat behind. You don't mind? She looked up and blushed. Don't worry, I don't know the rules myself. And how can I be sure that it's only myself? I sat down. Turns out we'll have to play the first round together. Yes. Finally, Electronic started to explain the rules. Electronic, who was silently watching our game, nodded in approval. Looks like now we're getting somewhere. Now, during the round, opponents trade cards three times. Keep an eye on each other. Penetrate your opponent with your eyes. I chuckled. Penetrate. What's so funny? Oh, never mind. I tried to keep a straight face. He stared at me for a moment and then moved on. And then we turned the cards up to see whose hand is better. Electronic went back to his diagram. Okay, we lose against Lena. It's still frustrating to lose anyway. I left the canteen. It was still too early to sleep and a short walk looked like a good idea. Where should I head to? So we go to the football field. I wanted to get away. How could I ever how could I ever lose in the first round? There was no excuse for me. The sports ground seemed to be the best place to go to be alone at the moment. Who would think of playing soccer in the evening? I sat down on a bench near the pitch and started to think about what had happened. Suddenly, from the volleyball field side, I started hearing sounds that seemed like the sounds of rasping or whistling. Turning, I saw someone desperately swinging his hand. Who was he gesturing to? To my astonishment, it was Lena. She was throwing the shuttlecock up in the air and attempted to strike it with the rackets. However, to be really honest, she sucked at badminton. I was just watching for a while, then decided to go up to her. I went around the volleyball court and got inside so that she could see me. Lena was as timid as a deer, so I'd rather not repeat previous mistakes. Hi. She glanced at me and immediately hid the racket and shuttlecock behind her back. You like badminton? Not really. I see you're not really getting it. Maybe you want some help. To tell the truth, I was not very good at badminton, but like just like any other child, I used to play it from time to time. Let me show you. Thank you. She blushed. I want to join the badminton team, but I don't see it happening, really. I wouldn't even try today, but... She looked up at me. I never had any luck at cards. It seemed like I was on fire today, so I thought I could be the same with badminton. After these words, I realized that Looney's losing to Lena is doubly upsetting. 
I would never think of you as being so keen on sports. She blushed again. Oh, excuse me. Come on, let me show you. I took the racket, threw the shuttlecock up in the air, and... Struck it with such strength it flew over the fence and got lost among the trees. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, I didn't expect that from myself. Never mind. Although, that was the last one. The last one? Let's go and get it. We'd better not. There is in the forest. What in there? A goblin? I laughed out loud. Maybe. It seemed like I was the only one joking around. There's no one there to be afraid of. Come on. Well, if you are with me. We went out of the sports ground and I started to inspect the trees. All of a sudden, the screech of an owl pierced the night. <laughs> Lena got so scared, she seized me with both hands, giving me something like a hug. This strong grip was a bit awkward. To feel a girl's body with and its warmth so close to me, I was filled with tenderness. I had a deep desire to protect her and to guard her from anyone, even if it's only an owl or another night bird. My only wish was to let this embrace last forever. However, all good things must come to an end sooner or later. After a while, I realized it was an owlet who was screeching on a branch next to us. It was holding our shuttlecock tightly. Is that what you were so scared of? <laughs> Take a look, it isn't scary at all. Lena looked out from behind my back. You're right, it's not scary at all. Hey, wait a second. I gently got out of her hug and came closer to the owlet. At first it seemed that it would get frightened and fly away, dropping the shuttlecock. But the owlet was still perching there. I succeeded in grasping the shuttlecock and carefully taking it from the bird. Hey, look, it's almost time. Would you like to pet it? Maybe some other time. I handed the shuttlecock to Lena. Thank you. She smiled gently. I have to go. Good luck at badminton. Lena smiled again and hurried away to the camp. How sweet can a girl get? It seems I overdid it a bit with the thinking. There's no usual crowd of hungry pioneers near the canteen. Or even inside the canteen. Most of them probably had their breakfast before 9am. That's even better. Two's company. Three's a crowd. Lena was sitting in the farthest corner of the canteen, lazily picking with a fork at an amorphous lump that vaguely resembled porridge. Having breakfast with her seems like a good idea. We can have a chat in peace. Or at least try to have one. I was on the way to her table when suddenly someone grabbed me by the sleeve. Genya, the librarian. <sighs> Get your meal and come. We need to talk. What are you waiting for? I was a bit confused. Pardon, isn't this too... sudden? What's wrong? Get your meal and sit down. I suppose that she considers her behaviour completely normal. Sorry, but I promised Lena. I was sure that Lena wouldn't mind if I sat next to her. Hold on. Wait a second. Sorry. Maybe later. I gently loosened my sleeve from her grip and headed to the farthest corner of the canteen. Jenny was shouting something in my direction, but I tried to ignore her. Hi. Good morning. Having heard the librarian shouting, Lena had been stealing glances at me for a while. Morning. Strangely enough, she didn't blush, but smiled instead. Sometime later, I finally came to the infirmary. I have nothing to do in that place, though the nurse seemed quite caring. Hmm. It's better to keep a distance from her. Such benevolence is actually scary. She may know something, but I hadn't the courage to enter the infirmary. Moreover, 
I had no reason to. Not a single one. Immersed in my own thoughts, I didn't notice the nurse who was standing on the porch. Hi there, pioneer. She came closer. The world was filled with two white orbs. You must be sick. Did you come for medicine? No, no, I was just wandering around. Oh, a truant, I see. But if you're here, I have a serious task for you. I gave her a look of inquiry. The word task made me feel uneasy. It sounded like something inevitable. The nurse smiled spitefully. I didn't notice. You both will help me to make an inventory of the supply of medicine which arrived today. Both? Who were we? Perhaps I misheard. But what could be confused with both? Hi again. Lena emerged from behind the nurse's back. It seemed strange that I hadn't noticed her until now. Come here after dinner. I have explained everything to Lena. She will tell you what to do. Medicine? Mm -hmm. Supplied today? But Olga told me that no bus would arrive in the next couple of days. So, there are visitors to our camp today? Yes. They arrived from the city this morning. Why are you asking? Just curious. All right, then. Pioneer. So, tonight, after dinner, you'll be here? Maybe I... Lena was barely noticeable this whole time. Surely she's able to remain invisible like a skilled ninja. I could do it on my own. Strange. She seemed more spirited during lunch. No way. There are lots of boxes. And a pioneer is always ready. Isn't that so, Pioneer? She gazed at me and smiled menacingly. I don't want to spend the whole evening doing something like this, and also, I've got more important things to do. But rejecting this request would really be improper. If that wasn't Lena who was standing here, I definitely would think my way out. Okay, I'll come. Nice. That's how a true pioneer should answer. Even after these words, I barely came a step closer to the Be Prepared, Always Prepared motto. Oh, pioneer. The nurse stood in front of me. I looked at her curiously. Go and take my place in the infirmary. I have an urgent call. Somebody is injured. Me? Yes, you. Take the keys. The nurse threw the keys at me and ran away. Why me? Isn't there anyone else in the camp? What exactly should I be doing? What if something happens? Oh, what do I do now? I've missed my chance to refuse. I stood in front of the door uncertainly. On the one hand, there is nothing to worry about. I'll spend half an hour here, or, and she'll be back. But what if someone comes for actual help? With a broken leg, or a head injury? I began to worry too much. I hope there are no injuries more serious than bruises and scratches in this camp. But at the same time, I could not shake the idea that in a serious situation I would be absolutely useless. I don't even know how to perform CPR. A magazine on the nurse's table caught my attention. A good way to relax, I guess. This is labelled Soviet fashion. The publication date or month were absent. However, this was not a surprise. There were much stranger things happening here. I didn't know much about Soviet magazines. Maybe they didn't actually have publication dates on them. Models dressed in old-fashioned clothes stared at me from the glossy pages. 
Nowadays nobody would wear such clothes. I smirked. I wonder if Slavia, for example, considered this fashionable. I can only imagine what would happen if she appeared in my time wearing something like this. Imagine we were walking hand in hand. I am wearing my coat with the hood, and she is dressed in a lavish dress, covered with lace and things. Seems like I'm already imagining Slavia in my world, with me. And not only Slavia. This dress better suits Yolana. This cute sarafan would look good on a Alyssa. This skirt and cardigan would look nice on Lena. If only they could be real. No, I saw them, heard them, could even touch them. But still, they are here and I... I simply don't belong in this place. It's alien to me. I'm just waiting for a chance to get out of here. Waiting because nothing is up to me anymore. I sighed, put my head on the table and fell asleep. I was awoken by the noise of the door opening. Lena stood at the door. The nurse isn't here. Then I'll come back later. I'm substituting for her. Since I'm responsible for pioneers' lives, I should do it with full responsibility. Although, in fact, I was just afraid of something bad happening because of me. Any health complaints? I tried to give Lena the most professional smile I could in order to not confuse her. Nothing special. Just a little headache. Let's do this! Some painkillers, maybe. Of course, I wasn't aware of where to find the required medicines, so it took me a while to find them. Finally! I handed the metamizol tablet to Lena. Thanks, she smiled. That was completely unexpected, and I lost touch with reality staring at her. What? Lena turned awkward in an instant. Listen. I've been wondering, do you like this? I don't know what got into me, but I grabbed the magazine from the table and showed her that picture of a skirt and a cardigan, which would really suit Lena, in my opinion. Maybe I went completely nuts thinking about all the girls being in my world. Or maybe I wanted to distract myself instead of just waiting for the nurse to come back. Lena looked at the picture. Yes, I guess. Is stuff like this in fashion? I guess. She got confused and started blushing. Why do you ask? Really, why? Be, I think you would look gorgeous in it. Thank you. It's alright. I'm just being completely honest. By the way, where is this place? Electronic roughly described to me the directions and told me the story of the old camp. The camp leader looked at me attentively. If you think that I... You're the only man here. Oh, well, if you're going to be like that. I looked around the area. Of course. Electronic was quick to flee. I still didn't want to walk in the woods alone. If you ask me, I would. Go with Lena. I won't have to go there alone, will I? Olga thought for a moment. You may be right. We'll go together tomorrow. Well, it's time for me to go. Lena quickly turned around and walked quickly in the direction of her cabin. I suddenly had a thought that something about this was a bit off. Not quite right. After all that had happened, it just... Well, it's time for me to go. It usually goes differently in such situations, doesn't it? I have no idea what I expected, though. Exhaustion hit me again. Walking with difficulty, I entered the cabin. The leader was sitting on my bed. Semyon? She started to talk sadly. Where have you been? Well, I... Prepared for a scolding, I didn't expect that reaction. I went to look for Shurik. Alone? I will tell her that we went alone. Yes, alone. So, what about Shurik? Within minutes we were already standing at the pier. 
Well, here's the boat. Hang on, I'll go and get fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But they're tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next, how to continue the conversation. If Slavia hadn't come back, we'd have probably sat there till evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. We got into the boat. I untied it, pushed off to the shore and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. That island's named the closest one. I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye, aye, captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I'd rowed a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way I spent concentrating on staying alive while trying to get to the island. Slavia and Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. It was all too much for me. At last we arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like the first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely a hundred metres long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath our feet, with wind causing lowly waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. We gotta split up. That way we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right. My bad. So how are we going to split up then? <laughs> Let me go with you. Let's go. Okay, that's fine. Grab your, Slavia grabbed the second basket and ventured into the opposite end of the island. And all I wished for was to lie down in a bed and fall asleep as soon as possible. But I was being surrounded by smoke and the useless chatter of pioneers around me instead. They were cheering and laughing and in general enjoying this warm summer evening. In the far side of the glade I noticed that Lena was arguing with Lisa intensely. Intensely and Lena? Seems like a complete opposites to me. Slavia had left to go somewhere after our conversation it seems. Electronic and Sherrick were trying to furiously prove something to Olga. Looks like I'm the only one who doesn't belong here. Right, let's try to find out what Elisa and Lena are arguing about. Only Lena and Elisa stood out in all the splendor. Well, of course, it was quite natural for Elisa to be arguing with someone like that. But hearing Lena talk in a raised voice... I came closer, silently, trying to find out what was going on. No, you listen to me. I'm not going to listen to anything. Really? Great then. Alyssa turned away and her eyes met mine. At first she was obviously was confused about what was going on, but then... So, you're eavesdropping. What? Me? No. She began slowly advancing on me and I took a few steps back. 
Lena, however, remained standing where she was. Well, okay then, listen. Elena stopped halfway. Elisa stopped halfway and turned back to Lena. By the way, did you know he was peeping on me today? She seemed to calm down a bit. What's going on here? I turned around and saw Elisa lazily chewing a bun. In the wrong place at the wrong time, this situation is a perfect example. I just froze in surprise, not knowing what to say. But Lena was smarter. Time to pass him on. Catch! Elisa looked surprised. No wonder. She hadn't heard the entire conversation. What? I said catch. Within a moment, Lena became like she was before, calm and unruffled. What shall I catch? Him. She pointed a finger at me with disgust. He complains about how he loves you, how he cannot live without you, and stuff like that. What? Elisa's eyes popped open wide. No, that's all wrong. Lena is just joking. I giggled nervously. Why, that's exactly what's happening. Listen, everything has its limits, I said quietly to her. Do you want there to be victims? Why, I already suggested you should go with her. I don't know what you're talking about, but don't involve me. You don't know. Lena said it softly, but a voice had a trace of rage in it. The same thing again. Elisa looked at her, frightened. Listen, I understand you well, but I don't know, really. Um, not a single word, not a single thought about him, I swear. You don't know. Lena jumped at her, and before I realised, smashed Elisa with a powerful right hook. Well, I'd understand a simple slap, but such a blow could break someone's jaw. Elisa collapsed and seemed to lose consciousness. What should I do? We'll help Elisa. What are you doing? I ran over to the falling girl and tried to figure out if she was alive at all. 